d'un pit. What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today's Wednesday, it's hump day. If we have a look at the markets, there's some slight green across the board. Nothing really too major. We're not really moving much in either direction, which is begging the question, are we due for a breakout or a breakdown? We're gonna dive in and have a look at that. But first, let's just look at the markets. We have a $3,609 Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance actually up 0.1% uh, since yesterday. XRP, 32 cents. Ethereum, $118 with $120 billion market cap. I feel like we've just been looking at this same market cap for quite some time right now. We really can't seem to break out of this... Uh we really can't break out of this valley that we're in. So Redcoin is up 21%. Waves uh, almost 18%. They actually had some good news that came out. Nano, Theta, Bytum, Stratus, Bitcoin Cash, 0x, Odom, Ravencoin, and Verge all doing quite well today. Not to mention also out of our Mimblewimble competitors, we have Beam up a whopping 45%, which is pretty incredible, um, you know, compared to Grin, which is still not on Coin Market Cap. But if you come over to Coin Gecko, you can see that it's actually up. Uh, 7.9%, so it's $3.95. Now, I mean, this thing had a massive, massive uh, sell-off when it first came out. $261, plummeted all the way down to like $5.15, but now it's sitting around $3.95. So, to those of you that were patient, well, this could have paid off for you. So, um, not financial advice, but you know, Good things come to those who wait, right? So having a look at what is going on here, this is what we've been looking at. Clearly, we fell right here, November 14th. We took the plummet. We touched all the way down to 3,100. By the way, guys, I'm using um, Bitfinex today. I usually use Bitstamp. It was an accident, but we could still use this chart. It's just off a little bit when it comes to the dollar amounts, right? But we did drop to around that $3,100, and here we are right here, still struggling to get out of this hole that we have fallen into. So if we zoom in and we have a look, we were comparing the similarities between this move right here and this move right here. Obviously, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the BART bot patterns, I went over this in the video a few days ago. I'll drop it if you guys want. You guys can check that out. So the thing is, is we were assuming that we were going to follow the same pattern because up until that point we had. In fact, when we had this massive dump right here, this was just this repeating itself again, right? So we had down, down, across, across, dump, dump, up, up, um, you know, losing price. Lo we went over this, right? And then we had this pattern. So according to this, we thought we were gonna go down, well, we went up, but now we're currently consolidating right here. And as you can see, volume has dropped very, very, very low. So if we look previously what happens when volume tends to get very low, especially when we're going sideways, that's when you usually have those massive breakouts or breakdowns. For example, you could take this one right here. Look how low that volume was and boom, instant sell off. Now we could take this you know, recent pump here or this one here, uh, low volume, low volume and boom. So I am personally expecting a move. The question is in which direction? I don't know. But I'm expecting a move one way pretty soon, and it's probably going to be a very big move. Might not be today, but I would definitely keep our eyes on the charts. Now, talking about some people that do have a better idea, potentially, of what's going on, we have Bitcoin's GTI Global Strength Technical Indicator is now at 35.6, which Bloomberg notes is nearing oversold levels and the lowest level since December. Um, so the parameter indicates the coin has robust support between $3,000 and $3,100 and is stabilizing around the $3,500 mark as we just looked at. Now, Bloomberg gauges the likelihood of a short-term rally based on the GRI Vera trend signals indicator. By the way, Vera stands for Vo Volatility Explosion Relativity Adjusted Theory. The more you know. So, it's used to identify trends over multiple time spans. Having reportedly breached its lower Vera band limit yesterday, Bitcoin quickly rebounded to trade just above it, a behavior that Bloomberg suggests could signal a short-term price surge. Don't forget we also had Alistair Milne the other day predicted that Bitcoin is likely to repeat and even exceed its record-breaking price leap, saying that the probability that Bitcoin matches its all-time high price again and doesn't then continue past it seems very low. Each wave of adoption is an order of magnitude bigger than the last. However, 
Let's just take it a day at a time, guys. Let's just take it a day at a time. Now, talking about some uh, you know, notable figures in the space, you also have CZ from Binance saying that we've been in a bear market for a very long stretch, probably the longest in history for Bitcoin right now. It's actually not the longest in history, but if we go for another month, it will be. In fact, we were talking about this last night on the live stream that if we go for another month, this will officially be the longest bear market in Bitcoin's history. So that's just something to consider. He says, right now, I think that we are actually overshooting on the lower side. He emphasized that not only are there more people involved in the industry, but there's also a lot more development and a lot more building happening, happening as well. So the builders are building. We are seeing a lot more development in the space. So I actually think that we're probably overshooting on the lower side. But again, I could be wrong. This is mass technology. Now, even if you just, you know, glance over at trading view, you know, we're all the everyone loves to post their charts. You could see right here that a lot of these indicators are even showing, you know, sell, sell, strong sell. And this is based on oscillators and moving averages and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a lot of sell. There's some neutrals, but it seems like uh, most people are saying sell right now, which is weird. So it does beg the question, what is going to end up happening? But the thing is, is that regardless of price, guys, you know, you could, we could talk about conspiracies all day, you know, who's manipulating it, who's pushing the price down. The inevitable fact is, is that these guys are still building. They're looking to get in and, you know, like just be patient. Basically, that's all you could say, because you could see right here. You also have, as far as backed is concerned, it says ahead of its launch, the they're looking to hire a bunch of people. So they've recently posted eight new jobs um, Tuesday, and they're looking for several experienced software developers, including mobile and blockchain developers, an institutional sales manager with experience in North America or Asia, and three higher level positions, including a director of finance, director of security, engineering and director for blockchain engineering. So these guys are serious. I mean, yeah, the government shutdown and definitely isn't helping the fact that backed keeps getting pushed back over and over and over again. But the anticipation is definitely swelling. And the fact that they're still working in the background, hiring people definitely is sending positive vibes my way. I don't know about you guys. Now, I want to turn to this Reddit article because I always like to ask your opinion on things, right? And this person says the ultimate question and something you should have thought about already. Besides Bitcoin being a speculative vehicle to potentially make a lot of money, um, you know, do you actually care about Bitcoin? What if this was the real value of Bitcoin and it stayed here and moved slightly up due to inflation, just like any other currency? Would you still give a crap or would you just leave the space for good? Now we know that Bitcoin is deflationary by nature, but just hypothetically, would you guys be okay with that? Would you would you still care or, or, or would you not? I'm curious. I, I think there would be a, a decent chunk of people that probably wouldn't care. I think there's some people that are only in the space to make money and just don't care whatsoever about Bitcoin and its value proposition. But I like to think that there's some people that are here because they want to be here. So I'm curious, where do you stand on this? If Bitcoin was to just kind of, you know, level out and just chill and just sort of just do its thing and then we could just sort of use it as money, would you still be as interested? That is definitely the question to ask. Now, guys, please, I need to point this out because this was circulating in the Telegram group last night. Please be very careful. There is a scam Coinbase email that's going around. It looks exactly like this, okay? And then it says down here, during the process, we recommend all our customers to move their funds in the private, um, old, it says old storage wallets <laughs> we provide. Oh, okay. Please find below your private wallet address and private keys. First of all, what private keys? These are public addresses, so that should be red flag number one. Number two, Coinbase would never ask individual users to move their own funds. You know, Coinbase, they have their own system. They do what they do. So this is a scam. Please, guys, if you get this, do not send your money to this. This is crazy, okay? I know most of you are, most of you know this is a scam, but there might be some new people on the channel. So please be very careful with that, okay? Now, <laughs> funny news. You guys probably already know about this. We talked about this last night, too. I mean, it's not really funny news, but, um, you know, John McAfee is now... 
in exile, apparently. He's on a boat. He's um he's still going to try to run for his campaign, but he says that um, you know, there's unspecified charges against him. Obviously, he's came out and said he hasn't paid his taxes in, you know, 8 years. Screw the IRS, screw the SEC, right? So, you guys can have a read. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen it. He's got like a two and a half minute video on Twitter about it. So, you know, the question was some people were saying, oh, you know, this guy's not a good look for cryptocurrencies. I mean, you got to kind of take it both ways. In one hand, he has created a lot of awareness for crypto. A lot of people have, you know, listened to this guy and then paid more attention to cryptocurrencies. But some argue that he sort of has this negative connotation with crypto and maybe it's not the best light to shine the space in but you know you let me know how you guys feel about that now here's an interesting thing so yesterday not yesterday a couple days ago we were talking about wyoming and wyoming is is trying to recognize bitcoin as money right well pennsylvania is pretty much doing the complete opposite however it turns out that this isn't Although this isn't, I thought this was bad news at first, it's kind of not the greatest news, but at the same time, it's kind of cool because it's good for the exchanges. So let me just get into this and tell you what's going on. So Pennsylvania's uh, Department of Banking and Securities, or DOBS, can I call it Dobbs? Can I just say Dobbs? I don't know. Has clarified that crypto exchanges and service providers do not require a money transmission license to operate in the state. The department explained that as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are not money, the Money Transmission Business Licensing Law, or Money Transmitter Act of Pennsylvania, does not apply to crypto trading platforms. According to the act, only fiat currency or the U.S. government-issued currency is considered money. To date, no jurisdiction in the U.S. has designated virtual currency as tender. Um, like I said, Wyoming, they're working on it. We'll have to see. They say the act states that parties conducting the business of transmitting money need to be licensed if they transfer fiat currency and must charge a fee for the transfer. However, as crypto exchanges never directly handle fiat currency and the transactions are conducted through a bank, these are not money transmitters that require the license according to the guidance. Other businesses in the sector such as cryptocurrency kiosks, ATMs, and vending machine providers are also not money transmitters. So while this sucks in one hand as far as them not accepting or not realizing Bitcoin as money or cryptos as money, it is kind of uh, more relaxed for, you know, the guys with the ATMs and the exchanges. So it's one of these really weird things where it's like, it has both a positive and a negative side to it, but short term, probably more positive potentially, but let me know what you guys think about this one. It's an interesting article. Like, like I said, at first it seems negative, but then it seems kind of positive, but then you're like, well, but I do want Bitcoin to be money, right? So it's kind of a weird one, that one. Now, I also want to talk about some more things going on. So you have the Dutch bank, ABN AMRO, has unveiled cryptocurrency storage facilities, which will see its clients able to deposit Bitcoin along fiat currency. So this is interesting. Now you're seeing banks offering custody solutions for cryptos, right? So ABM AMRO aims to offer Bitcoin storage in the same online banking environment customers use for day-to-day -day activities through a product called Wally. The move sees ABN first to provide direct Bitcoin tools out of the major Dutch banks beating off competition from Rabobank, which has announced a similar project, Rabobit, in February last year. So the thing is, is some people are a little concerned about this because consumers' lack of control over their private keys and hence actual control of the Bitcoins means they're not actually embracing Bitcoin at all. Some argue, in short, custodial ownerships of Bitcoin goes against the reason why Bitcoin was created in the first place, which is removing trust and middlemen from the money. But I still think it's a step in the right direction, getting people comfortable. You know, maybe they'll start holding their Bitcoin in the bank. And then once they educate themselves and learn a little more, I'm sure some of them will choose to remove them from the banks and put them in their old own uh, cold storage, you know, put them in a Ledger Nano or something like that. Right. <clears throat> so. I still think it's it's not bad news, guys, okay? Now, here's, well, you know, it wouldn't be a day in crypto without some type of, you know, scam or unfortunate thing happening, right? So it turns out that users of Australian crypto exchange My Crypto Wallet are currently unable to make withdrawals because the exchange claims that the National Australia Bank has unexpectedly closed its bank account. So My Crypto Wallet has sent an email to its customers in which it labels the behavior of the bank unethical and unprofessional. So due to NAB closing our bank account without notice, we are sorry to inform you that all withdrawals are currently disabled until further notice. Now, 
The interesting thing, though, is that, um, you know, claims that all withdrawals, even cryptocurrency transfers from my crypto wallet, had already been disabled weeks before the recent announcement. One user says he was unable to withdraw XRP since the start of January. So the question is, are they lying? Are they, um, you know, I don't know. It, this is just so shady, man. That's why, guys, get your money off these freaking, like, little tiny exchanges. I'm not saying it's an exit scam or, or they're keeping people's money or, or whatnot, but, you know, even the bank shutting it down, how does that affect the cryptos? I'm not 100% too sure, to be completely honest with you, but, yeah, definitely if this is something that concerns you, check it out. And I highly, 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 highly suggest for like the hundredth time, please take your coins off the exchange if you are not actively day trading, okay? Now, also I want to talk about some, uh, I, I don't know if it's fake news. I think it was misleading news. Uh, so you have Binance investigating into that fact that we spoke about with those email hacks. Now that had happened back in July, right? But CCN had recently resurfaced it. And a lot of people were saying, you know, um, what, what's that saying, right? If it bleeds, it leads kind of thing, right? So the thing is, is they had said there that there were some discrepancies when they were looking at it, but after Binance investigated the matter, they found there was no evidence of a data breach. The global PR manager at Binance said, we're aware of this allegation and have investigated the photos in question, but there's no evidence that the leak is from Binance. She added that Binance has even seen photoshopped versions of the KYC photos allegedly hacked. So this means that if there is a stash of KYC documents, it's more likely that they came from a phishing website that then, you know, stolen off the official exchanges. So I guess you can take a sigh of relief. Okay. It looks like they weren't taken, at least not from Binance. We don't know from the rest of them. But the one thing I want to point out is I want to take this opportunity to explain to anybody that's not aware of how these phishing links work. So basically when you go to Google and say you go, you know, search for Binance or something or any website, sometimes you'll have sponsored ads that you don't notice or top search results, right? Where they will slightly change the um, address of the website. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not as obvious. And by clicking that link, you go to a website that looks exactly like the site that you're, uh, let me show you actually real quick. Look. So, for example, now this is a this is an over dramatized version, okay? But if you see right here, look, xx.xn, inance, hrb. See all this, like. But the thing is, is like, it, it, you would think it was a Binance link, but when you hover over it with your mouse, you could see this is it. Also, keep in mind that you can't always go by this. Some people go, oh, if it says it's secure, that doesn't always work, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. So what do you do? Well, obviously. Make sure it is secure. That's the authentic uh, certificate. Although, like I told you guys, they can get those now anyway. So make sure you're on the proper site. Bookmark the site so that you don't have to ever search for it or manually type it into your bar like Binance.com, okay? Or any website for that matter. So that is one way to avoid these phishing attacks. So it's unfortunate that you know, people got freaked out, but at the same time, it provided a good opportunity for a lesson learned without actually having to, you know, lose your KYC documents. So that is like a good news, bad news kind of mixed story today. Also, let's talk about some cryptocurrency news. I'm trying to keep this video a little bit short today if possible. So we have Catalyst Corporate Federal Credit Union is laying out its future plans for Ripple's XRP powered X Rapid. CEO Kathy Gardner says the firm, which serves more than 1,400 member and client credit unions throughout the U.S., plans to utilize the cross-border payment solution to boost payments to Mexico. Catalyst COO Brad Ganey says XRapid is giving companies a cost-effective way to ditch traditional wire services. The traditional international wire experience fails to meet today's expectations from a price, speed, and ease-of-use perspective. Blockchain technology and specifically Ripple's X Rapid product resolves all three of these challenges simultaneously. Also, it's good to see people using X Rapid now because that's going to create more demand for the token, which is why a lot of people were very worried and had a lot of things to say about it previously. Also, want to talk about something that this now this could be a rumor too, so take this with a grain of salt, guys. But the European FinTech Forum coming up in Paris is an event that calls for all of the participation of all players in the global FinTech industry. This event is scheduled to take place on the 29th and 30th of January. Giant payment processing companies like Ripple and Swift are expected to be there. However, there's rumors circulating um, that um, Swift executives are developing cold feet about participating in the upcoming event because of the 
unfavorable competition between the two giants. So remember there was another rumor going around, I don't know if you guys know this, when they said that Swift and Ripple were potentially going to partner, but then Brad Garlinghouse came out and said this is not the case at all. In fact, we are not partnering with Swift. We plan on taking them over. So that is just something to keep in mind as well. Also, guys, look at this really awesome thing that Binance is doing. So feed a child for one month with just one Binance. So this is Binance Charity. And um, yeah, they're doing a thing called Lunch for Children. It's a blockchain enabled platform that will allow all Binanceians to donate to our campaign to provide a lunch program for children in need. With this platform, you can feed a child in a remote area in Africa and other developing countries for a month. All it takes is one BNB. It's pretty incredible, guys, but really cool thing uh, moving forward. And, you know, so much easier, right, to send one BNB or, or, you know, cryptocurrencies to these people in need. You know, those like TV ads you always see, like sponsor this kid and you got to like, right? I mean, really cool that these guys are doing this. I definitely say that we need more philanthropy in this space for sure. Also, speaking of Grincoin, let's have a check. Let's see. What's, what's Grin doing? Grin is just chilling right at the same 397. But anyway, it says Hong Kong headquartered graphics card manufacturer Sapphire Technology launched the Sapphire RX 570 16 gigabyte HDMI blockchain graphics card, which it says has enough memory to be able to handle both the Kukaru and the Kukatu <laughs> proof of work algorithms that are used for mining the privacy focused Grin coin. So <clears throat> it says Grin's basic proof of work al algorithm is called cuckoo cycle and it was specifically designed to be resistant to bitcoin style hardware arms races it's primarily a memory bound algorithm which at least in theory means that solution time is bound by memory bandwidth rather than raw processor or gpu speed so there you go if you're looking to mine some grin maybe you'll uh, go pick one of these up we also have recently it was reported that the telegram creator pavel durov was likely to present his telegram open network and gram token at the world economic forum but um they said he didn't actually end up giving any comments on it but the team did provide some insights into it. So based on cryptographically protected distributed registries, the Telegram open network is intended to be a competitor to Ethereum for the launch and execution of smart contracts and decentralized applications. So in November 2018, Ton platform was reportedly 70% ready. According to those familiar with the matter, the test version of the platform is already available for some investors and official launch of ton or I don't know how to say it ton is that how you guys want to say it telegram open network is planned for the second half of the year so we should be expecting that and a few final things I wanted to talk about so a few hours ago CNBC reported that blockchain exchange alliance which holds a major stake in Bithum has ambition to go public in the US furthering those goals the Singapore based alliance signed a binding letter of intent with holding um with a holding company called Blockchain Industries, which trades publicly on US OTC markets. The company plans to uplist shifting from penny stock type OTC markets to the big boys, namely New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. This would be a milestone for the crypto industry as BitHum could become the first exchange to become publicly listed. So according to CoinMarketHap, BitHum is the world's top exchange by reported volume, which is currently stated as 1.4 billion. However, these volumes cannot be taken as gospel because BitHum was accused of faking volumes last month, something the exchange has denied. In addition to uh, you know all these different volumes, they were also hacked last June, which probably doesn't make it much better. But with these factors in mind, already cautious U.S. regulators, which have a habit of dragging their feet, may not be too enthusiastic about a publicly listed crypto exchange. Crypto markets, on the other hand, may just get the long-awaited boost as it can be considered another big step towards the nascent industry going mainstream. So yeah, this is a problem. I mean, all these exchanges being basically accused of wash trading. You've seen guys being jailed, right? The the one guy, I forget what the exchange was. He just got sent away for three years. So those are definitely things to uh, pay attention to and be worried about. Um, but you know, on the topic of um, crazy things, now I don't really know much about this website, Zero Hedge. Uh, I, don't, I don't really go here much, but somebody posted this on Twitter and it was really hilarious because it says, China starts debt shaming. New app warns users if they are walking near someone in debt. Apparently this is by Tyler Durr Durden, by the way, okay, and um, yeah, basically, long story short, 
<laughs> um, there's an app that reveals the debtor's name or photos. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me see. Oh, the program says it's a map of deadbeat debtors. Flashes a warning if someone in debt is within 500 meter radius, showing their exact location according to a screenshot on the app. So I don't even know if this is real, guys. If this is real, looks like Black Mirror has officially come true. But that being said, guys, it's Wednesday. I'm out of here. I know you guys hate those super long videos, so I'm keeping it a little bit shorter today, a little bit shorter today. So hope you guys are having an awesome week so far. Also, if you haven't had a chance to pick up a Ledger Nano S to keep your funds off of the exchanges and stay safe, you can buy the Ledger Nano S or you can get the Ledger Nano X Bluetooth, which is for pre-order. And that limited Genesis Block Edition is available if you use the link uh, in the description below. You definitely help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but of course you don't have to. And that being said, I appreciate everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting, turning on the bell notification, stopping by, saying hello, dropping a comment in the Telegram chat. You guys are freaking awesome. You rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.